Welcome back, folks. This is going to be a lesson on time elements in algorithm price delivery and an introduction to ICT macros. All right, so here is a NASDAQ daily chart here. I'm going to try to give you some context as to how I used the macro here on Friday. It's a fast, uh, not from payroll Friday for July 2023. So without this context, really, it doesn't help to know the specific times of the day that are called a macro. So again, this is why I, I counsel many of you not to try to teach something that you don't know yet. And as you can see, you know, this is going to be one of those things where it's an introduction. It's not going to satisfy everything initially, but everything leans on other concepts and aspects to my methodology. So it's just one more piece of the puzzle that comes together slowly over time and experience is the greatest teacher. So take a look at this naked chart and I want you to take a look at this down close candle here. We dug into that on Thursday. So we have a wick right there or a tail I guess you would call it. And whenever I look at a tail or a wick my eye goes immediately to the midpoint. Okay that's consequent encouragement. The algorithm treats this as a gap. On Friday we opened traded higher real close to the midpoint of that but what my eye was in addition to that wick my eye was also drawn into the high of this candle and the open of that candle okay so this is a bullish order block what makes it a bullish order block we are inside of this candle in terms of the high and the opening price and I'm using those specific price points and not the middle or mean threshold of the body or the mean threshold of the entire high to low. I'm using this because this is the last down close candle prior to this run up after digging into this one. So what specific kind of order block is this one here? If you looked at my month four content, uh, the mentorship, my premium mentorship content that's on my YouTube channel, again, it's month four and you'll see that there is a lecture called propulsion block. Propulsion block is something that works off of a earlier order block. So we have an order block here and then this one digs into that one but you don't ever want to see price go down below half of this candles body and we don't get that. We get real close to it but we don't get it. So that to me tells me that the next day it's still advantageous to anticipate higher prices. I mentioned on Twitter ahead of non farm payroll release at 8.30 in the morning New York local time that I favored the specific buy side and sell side liquidities and I showed you that I was looking for the higher side to be ran for first and I'll count you to look at uh, Twitter you'll see that. So all of these things lending well to bullish order block Thursday we respected the propulsion block and well, not from payroll, I was expecting an initial rally higher and maybe even challenge the high up here. But we don't know how far they're going to rip it or to trust it really ahead of not from payroll. So it's a guessing game in the beginning of how you use the information after the 830 news hits the marketplace. Uh, that manual intervention that's utilized many times to take both sides of the marketplace. And that means buy side then sell side or sell side then buy side and then the real move takes place so it's generally a whipsaw type event so these two levels here they are respective and associated with to these two specific levels on the down close candle there so you can see here on an hourly chart we have a high to low after taking buy side here inefficiency and when do breakers not provide the cleanest points of rejection or where we can use them for entries and, and whatnot? Non farm payroll, CPI, and FOMC. Okay, those those events where as I would usually see high, low, higher high. In other circumstances, I would treat this right here, I would treat this as a bearish breaker. 
and I would not anticipate this area to be traded to. I would look at this area here as a balanced price range, which it is in a sense, but I would look for this breaker to be utilized. So I'm taking it through not only the aspects of time, but I'm also telling you narrative, which is absolutely crucial to understanding what a macro will do. Okay, so it's not a magic pill where all of a sudden now you know how to trade because of there's a specific time of day. You still have to have some elements of understanding what price should likely do. And that is complicated. It's not easy. You're not going to figure it out, you know, watching this video and going into your charts right away. You just want to go through the process the rest of this year as I'm teaching more about them. I'll have more lectures, obviously, you know, and notes for macros in the books I'm putting out. But it's good enough for you to start with in studying. So we work up inside this SIBI, which is a premium inefficiency. The market wants to do what? Rally higher at non-farm payroll, reaches into this inefficiency. It doesn't need to go up here right away because we've had the run on buy side with this here. So all of this is the inefficiency that the price wants to run up to. So price only rallies to go up to inefficiencies like here, buy side above here, or it consolidates. Or it consolidates and goes below the marketplace for sell side or inefficiency. Okay, so uh, note this buy side and balance sell side inefficiency. It's a fair value gap in this inefficiency here, which is a SIBI. Both are a fair value gap. In a 15 minute time frame, those levels here shown respectively. Inside of the daily bullish propulsion block, that's the high that propulsion blocks wick, and this is the opening of that daily propulsion block. Remember, I spent a couple minutes explaining what that is. That's these two levels here. We also have that hourly fair value gap, which doesn't look like a fair value gap now once we go into a 15 minute time frame, which is why you want to do a top down from PD array discount and premium and go through what's available in terms of price action. Your first task is to again identify what is above the marketplace in efficiency and liquidity buy side and what's below the marketplace in efficiency and sell side. Now, obviously you can get crazy and look way beyond the scope of where the market will likely reach for. But we want to look at previous days, highs and lows, session highs and lows, the highs and lows in the last three days, and previous week high and low. So all those are very quick, easy, go-to, general rule of thumb. They'll serve you extremely well for knowing where price will likely gravitate for inefficiencies or liquidity. So we have non-farm payroll releasing at 8.30. And we're in a five minute chart now. Now here is where I was watching on the NASDAQ. I was interested in trading this one, not so much on the ES. And the reason why I chose NASDAQ, not because it's the better one to trade, not because uh, my tool said to choose this one. Uh, I was actually trading the NASDAQ because I had students asking me, okay, can you do more work on NASDAQ? Because I've been primarily teaching with the medium of the e and S&P. So I don't want you to think that what I'm showing here today was a selection based on anything except for you know, my students asking me to perform something in NASDAQ versus trading in the ES, which is what you've been predominantly watching me do majority of this year. So that bullish propulsion block, the wick high, the opening of that, and then that hourly fair value gap, that blue shaded area, in the middle of the propulsion block high and propulsion block opening price, that's these two specific levels here, the high, the wick, the opening of the, the propulsion block on the daily chart. Half of that range is the daily bullish order block, which is again propulsion block, premium wick consequent encroachment. That means from the high of the propulsion blocks wick to the opening of it, half of that, remember we treat wicks and tails on candlesticks as gaps and the midpoint is consequent encroachment that's this measurement right here you see how sensitive it is so the market drops after 
running up initially here. Comes back down below the lows in here, but digs into all this order flow, but specifically right into consequent encouragement of the bullish daily propulsion block, which is a order block. Then the market starts to move higher. Notice what it's doing first. It's taking buy side and trading up into an inefficiency and then reverses and goes down to sell side. So one of the things for your notes for not farm payroll, whatever side of the marketplace it goes for first rate as a 30 news hits, usually, not always, usually that will be the false run. So in other words, I'll give you an example here. It rallies for the buy side first. It takes traders into the marketplace, traps them long. They want to see it keep going higher. And then the market trades lower and takes out the sell stops on anyone that is long here and below recent lows. So they are not permitted to be allowed to ride this up. So trap them long, stop out any shorts, drop lower, induce new shorts, crush the longs, trap them short, accumulate the sell side, and then run for the buy side here and any other higher time frame, draw on liquidity. So this candlestick right here, that is your bullish order block. Again, same premise I used with the daily chart here, the high, the wick to the opening. Okay, so we're highlighting that. You can see that small little gap right in here. So I'm not highlighting the, the gap, that's the block of price action between this high and that low, that's your fair value gap. But I'm highlighting this order block that has that fair value gap, that is suggesting that we could go higher after stops have been taken. That is a high probability bullish order block. So we're looking for this shaded area here to key off of and use to get in alignment with price action going higher. Three minute chart, I'm adding that in here so you can see inside that order block, the gap actually gets refined even better here. You can see the bodies of the candles just about respecting that. And then sending it higher, we have an inefficiency here, which is what? An inversion fair value gap. So I'm gonna spare you all that. You can add this to your own charts and for notation purposes. Over here, normally you would see this and people that look at my stuff, they think this is a short, they want to go there, no, order flow is bullish, stops have been taken, draw is here. So all of this imbalance, it goes up into it and then treats it as support. So they're accumulating more longs in here. And you'll see that I'm actually doing that same thing with my live trading. And it rallies up, it takes out the buy side here. So we're dropping down into a one minute chart. Now we're going to get to the brass tacks of the discussion here. When we look at time, or when I'm teaching you time, uh, invariably, you know, folks that are trading exclusively with Forex or now have segued from Forex or just started trading or monitoring and tape reading the index features, which is where I'm trying to teach right now, I want you to think about how the characteristics of time are very unique to price delivery but across all asset classes so what i'm showing you here is how i internalize price action whether i'm looking at a forex pair whether i'm looking at a commodity or whether i'm looking at index futures okay so in my mind when i'm watching price action i'm aware and conscious of the seven o'clock to nine o'clock in the morning New York open kill zone. You know that from my lecture notes and teachings from Forex. Then you have the AM session, New York AM session from index trading, which is beginning of 8.30 in the morning to noon. Then you have what I've taught this year, the 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock AM silver bullet. I've recently introduced this year macros. Now macros are very specific segments of price action and they're usually 20 minute intervals, not all of them, but most of them are 20 minute intervals. I'm gonna teach you a few of them this year. I'm not gonna teach you all of them. I'm not in a position where I can do that, but there are several of them 
but these are specific windows of opportunity, but now I'm going to teach you the introduction to how I use them. When we look at price like this, I want you to see that there is price running up during non-farm payroll into that inefficiency. It drops aggressively, takes out sell side below these relative equal lows, and then returns into that hourly fair value gap, which is that blue shaded area right in here. It rallies again, comes back down, touches the high end of the hourly fair value gap. Then it rallies up into the inefficiency and takes buy side once more. What does it leave in its wake? Relative equal lows. And what specific measurement do we have here? The daily bullish propulsion block, which is an order block. The consequent encroachment of the high and the opening price. Again, that level is this here to here. Okay, those two respective levels. Half of that is here. Now, I already know, okay, I already know the majority of you, this is going right over your head because you want something where it's an overbought, oversold, moving average crossover, you know, something really simple, but I want you to understand something. These markets are driven by high frequency algorithm. They are not meant to be easily understood. The biggest complaint you're going to get if it's not me talking about things longer than they feel I should, it's the fact that I don't make it easy. You cannot make this topic easy. Okay, I promise you there's going to be a lot of folks out there that's going to start talking about this topic in YouTube videos, they're probably ringing into their mentorships. Guaranteed, they have no idea what they're doing. Okay, they don't. And if they did, they will go out there and show you examples after examples daily, every single week, and using the information. You're not going to see that. Okay, so with that disclaimer, okay, and monologue out of the way, I want you to think about how saying the non-farm payroll event typically performs. We have an initial run, buy side, sell side, and then time becomes a factor. This is how I teach folks that, and I mentioned this on Twitter space recently, a few days ago. Uh, Twitter space is something that uh, it's just me audibly talking. It's usually a psychological lecture and uh, coaching basically without a chart, encouragement, that type of thing. And sometimes it's a woodshed moment where I'm scolding you for doing things you shouldn't do, which is something I wish I would have had done for me when I was coming up. The sell side, again, is taken here. When it is traded below these relative equal lows and into the bullish propulsion block, consequent encouragement from the daily chart, that's this level here, the blue line, and that blue line right here. Okay. So you can see right away, that's, this is the reason why I have things written out in text format, okay? Numerical levels, and then I'm describing what they are on a notepad. I don't want all these things on my chart because it, it gets on my nerves, okay? It's too distracting for me. But to teach you conceptually what it is that I'm referring to and how to visually see it, I'm showing it like this with lipstick on the chart. I do not have these things on my chart. I, com I completely empty my chart of all things unless I'm recording something and I'm showing you what I'm observing or thinking and focusing on at the time. So that way anybody that can come afterwards and watch the video, they can't say, oh, well, you know, you're just making it up as you go. No, there's a very sound logic being applied to everything that I ever do. And the excuse is that my <laughs> trolls and detractors will say, I always have something to explain the marketplace. Well, that's because I know the marketplace. And I've engineered a lot of things that you're learning that the marketplace will use. So go into the 10 o'clock hour here. Right before 10 o'clock, you have a 10 minute interval, 950. That's here. 950 to 1010. Now, I already know that some of you are going to be first time viewers of my content and this is going to be the video you see first. The things I'm explaining here are going to seem completely cherry picked in all hindsight. But go back and look at the videos that I share on my Twitter feed where you actually watch me execute 
during these times of the day. I'm doing several examples recently. I've done a few with uh, the 1050 to 1110, and I've done a few on the 950 to 1010 macro. This 20 minute period specializes in when the market is approaching the first 30 minutes of trading after 930 in the equities market. That's that last threshold for even when the Forex market's trading around. Okay, so if you're a Forex trader, it's still important to know this. If you are not a Forex trader and you're using futures, it's applicable. It's all joined together. It's, it's a tapestry of how all the markets work together harmoniously. And when they aren't harmonious, there's a crack in correlation that in itself gives you warning signs that something's about to change and maybe the change may be abrupt. Okay, so uh, that's, out the, that's outside the scope of this discussion today. But I want you to think about how we were running up into this inefficiency and this buy side during the 950 to 1010 macro. What was it doing? It was delivering price to buy side and inefficiency. This one single candle passed down. So it's doing two primary functions here. It's running to an area that would be deemed a premium relative to the high and the low here. We rally up to liquidity, rebalance this inefficiency. How do we know that's balanced? Because we worked back and forth in it, then we left it, went back in, all the bodies are staying inside of it. It's respecting that. That's that's narrative. That's how you read candlesticks. It's not with Steve Nielsen's stuff. Okay. This right here sees us drop lower. What's occurring at the 950 to 1010? It's already worked in this liquidity. What is it going to deliver next? Well, what's the profile for non-farm payroll? We ran buy side. We left relative equal lows. We've been bullish on S&P. We've been bullish on NASDAQ. So it's going to drop down and take the other side of the marketplace out because they've engineered liquidity here using this hourly fair value gap. And it trades down into the midpoint or consequent encroachment of that daily propulsion block. I can imagine how this would feel bewildering for a new trader or a new student. Okay, You do not need to know how to do this to learn how to trade properly with my stuff. I'm only producing this to show you the level of detail that the algorithm refers back to when it's timing its movements for liquidity, when is it timing its movement for inefficiencies, and how it utilizes time. Look at it like this. We have the New York open kill zone. Okay, the majority of it is quiet. And then at 8.30 we have the release of the non-farm payroll. It goes up to inefficiency. At that moment, we have an overlap of the 9.30 a.m. and the New York open kill zone. Right in here, there's a lot of overlap where there's going to be a lot what? Volatility. We quickly drop down one more time, inefficiency, but leaves majority of it open. Then rips lower, trades into the hourly fair value gap. Then we chop around a little bit, trade back up into the inefficiency at 9.50 to 10.10, and then it will do what? It will start its protraction lower to go into this liquidity here. This drop here, all this movement, notice how all this price run is during the AM silver bullet, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock in the morning, and the New York AM session between 8.30 and noon New York local time. So we can see and anticipate many times where you'll see me doing executions. I'll say, I'm looking for speed now. I want to see big candles. I want to see movement that's a sharp drop or a, a strong rally from here. I'm utilizing this type of information here. The macro in itself is just a time window where the 950 to 1010, what this is actually specializing in, is it's the first 20 to 30 and then 40 minutes of the trading hour starting at 930. So when equities market opens at 930, the, the stock market bell starts ringing. The first 30 minutes is the opening range. But that opening range doesn't have to or is required 
to be 30 minutes before the actual range is useful. It can form in 20 minutes and then whatever liquidity is utilized there outside that parameter, high and low, it'll help you determine where the market will likely go to next. I'll have more teachings on the opening range. But at 950 to 1010, what is actually happening is, is the run that starts at 930 here, it goes into the liquidity here. So now we start a macro between 950 and 1010. A macro is a short list of directives that the algorithm will run. It's like a, a small little list of orders that it has to do to then seek where liquidity and or inefficiencies are. We've already went into a premium relative to the high and low. We're into inefficiency and we've already bumped buy side. So two functions of delivery of price has been met, both of them, for the purposes of seeking liquidity and inefficiency. It has balanced this out here and then it starts its run for the opposing side of liquidity. Why is it not going to keep going higher? Why is this not a bull flag? Because the parameters of the buy side here and the sell side, we have to incorporate the profile of non-farm payroll, which is what? First rally, then go down, take out the stops, and then resume going higher. Or drop down, take out sell side, then run higher, take out the buy side, and then drop down. Or just be a choppy you know, mess that non-farm payroll can many times be. We drop down during the peak of silver bullet 10 to 11 time window. There is a silver bullet entry in here. There is a silver bullet entry in here during the AM session silver bullet time window. Trades down to consequent encroachment of the bullish propulsion block on the daily chart. And it's also consequent encroachment of the hourly fair value got this shaded in blue. Notice that? Then we rally a little bit, short term high, we pierce that. We have an order block again that was shaded from the higher time frame. We drop down, touch another order block on the hourly chart. So you can see the hierarchy from higher time frame down to lower time frame. The market touches it beautifully, stops perfectly at this opening price, the down close candle, inside that shaded area, which is a larger time frame or higher time frame order block from high to opening price. That's what that green shaded area was. And then we rally. What does it form right here during the 1050 to 1110? What is the significance with 1150 to 1110? You're ending the 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock hour, which is the first 90 minutes of trading. And then we're going to enter the time of day where we enter a New York lunch. And New York Lunch has its own macro, or it usually runs for liquidity. We have a low, high, lower low, making this, these up close candles, the two of them, that makes this a bullish breaker. And we can utilize that and anticipate higher prices. Running for the buy side here, the buy side here, and the high of the inefficiency that's shaded here on the higher time frame charts. I want you to think about how the macro time is utilized for the market to begin its run for liquidity, the run for inefficiency. What specifically is 1050? Well, it's 10 minutes before 11 o'clock. That's essentially the height of London close for Forex. Then we have the last hour before we get to New York lunch. Now, I know there's a lot of people that argue because there's no open outcry anymore like it used to be and you know, the markets are electronic and nobody goes to lunch. It doesn't matter. The markets will enter some measure of consolidation going into lunch. Uh, it'll run for liquidity or it can reverse. So there's three primary functions that the lunch hour will do. You have to be able to fit that into the market profile for that particular day. And we have a nine farm payroll event. So we've seen the initial run here, buy side, engineered sell side, then it drops it down for sell side. Now it's free to go higher because no one's long. They got stopped out. Anyone that was buying long on the breakout was 
raked across the coals. Anyone that went short breaking out below these relative equal lows here are trapped short. Then the market can go higher. So I want you to see that these time windows, these macros, they're just a time aspect to when I anticipate the market to start reaching, start doing some showing animation. Okay, It's not enough to simply know these times of day. Inside those respective times, there are specific times and windows of opportunity for me and now you as my students to anticipate a specific phenomenon in price where it will start behaving like we would expect it to. It will start running for liquidity. It will start running for inefficiency. If the macros do not provide that timing aspect and the market just simply doesn't budge, that is many times a beautiful illustration for you to stop looking and close your charts. Because the markets ran algorithmically. Whether you want to believe it or not, that's the facts. And if these elements are not producing movement, driving price to either inefficiencies or liquidity, if it's not showing any movement that you would expect that fits your analysis, where you think the next draw on liquidity is going to be, if that's not occurring, you have to close your charts and trade the next session. There's macros in the afternoon. There's macros during the lunch hour. Okay. Uh, there's macros in the London session. I'm showing you these two here because I just recently used them, proving that they exist. Okay, all a macro is, is the beginning of a spooling event. Spooling is where price starts to reach for. It, it reaches for, um, think about like a, a fishing rod. You ever been fishing before? And you have your hook and your weight on the end of it, and your bait's on the hook, and you cast the fishing line out into the water. What's occurring with the fishing line? It's spooling. It's it's running off this this reel, a fishing line, and it's delivering that hook, that weight, and that bait far away from where you're standing. That's what the, that's what these macros are doing. It's like casting price away, higher or lower. And I'm watching these specific times of day to do those very things. It is not going to give you a direction. Okay, so when you see these people out there trying to talk about how, yeah, the macro here, you know, this is how you know it's going to be a buy, it's how you know it's going to be a sell. No, you need to require your understanding about all the other things I'm teaching you. You still have to know how to tape read. You still need to know how to determine a bias. You still need to know where liquidity is and how you use that liquidity and work within a higher time frame analysis. Otherwise, this is not going to help you. It's not going to help you. Okay, so if you don't know everything else that I'm teaching, this is going to be a point of frustration for some, for majority of you. I'm going to read complaints. People are going to complain about me in other people's videos. I don't care. I know how to use it. It's not imperative that you learn how to use it. But I wanted to show you, again, proof that these markets are algorithmic and they operate on the basis of time first. Time is the first crucial factor before price will move. Unless a bomb drops, unless there's some kind of geopolitical upheaval, something crazy, unexpected, swan event occurs, the markets are not moving randomly. They're not just popping off it. Whenever you know a lot of buyers or sellers come out, they're not going to be moving because a whole bunch of people on Reddit are going to try to take down the hedge funds and go against them. All that stuff is nonsense. And all of these markets, whether you choose to believe it or not, every asset class are driven by artificial intelligence. That artificial intelligence is an algorithm and it follows instructions that were coded for it. And it runs things based on time, period. So let's take a look at this in relationship to where I executed and how I traded it. You can see how I use this information. There you go, and I'll take them on and off so you can see they're being populated as I add them to track them from the chart. And there's executions. And over the course of the entire day, you can see the executions as well. So that's a market maker cell model. All right, folks, hopefully you got something out of this one. 
I understand it's probably very advanced and it's probably left you with more questions and that's wonderful that means you have opportunity to grow in your understanding if you don't have any questions you know there's a problem you probably didn't watch it close enough but uh, a macro is simply a time of day where price will begin to spool that's all it is it's reaching for liquidity or it's reaching for inefficiency if the market is not showing signs of respecting that measure of time then it's probably indicative of a bailout and don't do anything with that session or maybe even that trading day and it'll probably spare you uh, some drawdown and or losing trades and so i'll talk to you next time be safe